Oh, that looks badass. Greetings there tonight, folks. This is yours truly, but first let's get to my buddy here. What up? The what? JT review. There we go. My <laughs> old college buddy that I've been live tweeting with a lot during these past six weeks and then seven weeks before then, earlier this year. Yours truly, Nathaniel Rentrell, P in between, or as you'd more likely know me online, better call JBJ Blaze. Amazing. Actually, no, yes. that's using my first name, but speaking of better <laughs> calling, holy crap. What an episode, eh? Oh my goodness. I, I yeah. was, and I don't know why I was worried that this might not be the best that the wrap up may not be just the top notch quality we'd expect and of course right. it delivered in my Oh opinion. absolutely yes I and, don't know like yeah it totally delivered and what really got me was and you know what I will say this I liked that ending way better than Breaking Bad. Really? Yeah. I, I love Felina. Especially yep. the way it ends with that whole baby blue thing. And yeah. that Walt does one final act. Mm hmm. And, anyways, so one final act to sort of redeem himself with his former student who he's manipulated the living hell out of and so of course he got the ending that he did where he ironically dies not of the terminal cancer but of his own doing right and so while Saul's own doing is what brings his end it only lands him in jail for that short amount of time. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, they said he's in there for 86 years, right? Oh, I thought that was uh, Kim that sa said she was in there. But then again, she left, so I'm thinking I must have lost something in translation there. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I was a little confused too. So I, I thought she originally said that she he had seven years and then he he, he dropped that. And now he has 86 years. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, from what, from what I had gathered. Uh, oh, my gosh. I just saw that on your Twitter feed here. Poorly aged things. Anyone who thought Better Call Saul wouldn't be as good as Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true, man. <laughs> I'm actually looking for your new profile pic, which I honestly copied right after you. As soon as I saw that, that... Holy crap, that's brilliant. Changing your picture to be black and white after the whole new color palette. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not new, but it's new that we've experienced so bloody much of it. I hope you don't mind me using your profile. No, of course not. No, I got that I got that from somebody else, so <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna fill up a frame here so that it's not all black. Crap, I should have this freaking thing as black and white. That's what I actually did with the... What's it called? That game called The Last of Us? Right, yeah. Remastered, and even part two, where once they finally introduced the new colors to the game, I thought, if I'm going to replay this, it's got to be in a different color palette. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> it just brings somehow a new thing to the game. And it, it's very impressive, just... It, it kind of reminds me of Schindler's List in that way, actually. That... Holy cow. Oh, the, now my face looks better. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And, but, uh, yeah, what what'd you think of that, that first scene, that flashback with Mike? I, I, I didn't think we were going to get to see Mike again, you know? I... So here's my deal with that. It reminded me of how El Camino opened up, where it's right. 
basically. Actually, crap, I think that was a total parallel come to think of it. Oh, there we go. Right. Of where El Camino starts off with Jesse and Mike talking. And oh my god, that, that was so brilliant that, uh, again, Jesse and Mike talk about what they're going to do in the future. And then Better Call Saul has it where instead it's Jimmy or Saul. No, he would have been Jimmy still at that time. Not yeah. really adopting the Saul persona. Right. And talking about, hey, what would you do if you had a time machine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was, that was uh it was such a great little chat and I like I loved like the little things like even Mike's answer where he said like back when he like he he would go back to when he took his first bride and like he would change that like that just adds so many layers to Mike's character too and I don't know. It was it was a great scene. Yeah, and it's something that I'm actually so surprised that I caught on to cuz with most of my shows I tend to feel like I'm watching them only maybe passively. Right. And so when I see a review, like I've been paying a lot of attention to Eric Kane's reviews because there's another AMC show called Fear the Walking Dead. And during yeah. its fifth season, I felt something was a bit off, even though I enjoyed it. And then he points out that while they're using help, that very word, as much as something Martin Scorsese makes uses the F bomb. Right. Okay. And yeah. where certain characters including the main guy is stripped of the qualities that we love him for and it was after that review that i thought holy crap this eric kane is bringing up problems that i never really wanted to admit to myself and where i will admit he's got i mean aside from some other reviews of his that I may disagree with more or less. About the only one that I would really disagree with him on is Mippy. Right. That that was the one where he got a lot of flack for calling it the show's first genuinely bad episode. Mm, yeah, no, I I love Mippy. I thought that was also yeah. a great episode, yeah. Yeah, same here. And I I even like that uh, another friend of mine who was going to maybe see if he'd come on to chat with us tonight. Uh, I've known him online for years from the Shaft podcast community, which I will mention because they're the ones that actually, because of them, I found out about Breaking Bad. Oh, okay. It's kind yeah. of funny because they're talking about Minecraft and they'd bring up Breaking Bad here and there. And I thought, this seems like a really popular thing. And then it was you mentioning about those who have passed away before the final season here got to begin. And while it was a teacher of mine who I've mentioned on Twitter, uh, Lally, who taught physics at my high school, it was actually this Mr. Swayze whose name I think is fine to mention because my high school's mentioned his name on Twitter, and that I so still vividly remember having a conversation with him. And what I'm going to segue in, back into this episode is, so back in the day, do you, do you remember when they had, I forget what it, oh, Story Sinks, that's what they were called. Uh, basically, an online, as the show goes, multiple choice questions as to how you feel about something was committed in the show. Right. And there was one about 50-50. Uh, do you believe, what, what do you think of Chuck in this moment with his brother? And the options were, well, he's got a point about his brother. Or the other option is, he's a colossal asshole. <laughs> right, <And> yeah. <laughs> I remember talking with my teacher that, yeah, I kind of felt like one of those once I picked, well, he's got a point, and most of the votes were put towards, no, he doesn't have a point. It's the other option. <laughs> right, yeah, because everybody hates Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it was crazy to to uh, to see him again in this episode. I, I I expected we would we would see Chuck again just because you know um, like Michael McKean is so loved by like the cast and the crew and everything. So I did expect we would see him again. But uh, I don't know, like, until, like until that last moment, I was I was still guessing myself. I was like, oh, is is he gonna show up here or is he not? Do we really need to see Chuck? But uh, that was a great scene between him and Jimmy. Oh yeah, I am surprised I didn't get in trouble from my folks because mm-hmm. I'll often be loud in my TV room, and the moment he comes on screen, I go. Chuck! Holy crap, he's back! And I'm thinking, oh crap, that was a bit loud. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, maybe they're gonna think I accidentally, or just out of the blue, dropped the F bomb, and to which I just clarify, oh no, 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 I said Chuck. And it's right. pure excitement, because we haven't seen him since season four. And that was only a small moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, true. And I was thinking, you know, we've seen Chuck now. In every season but season five. Season five is the only season he doesn't appear in. Huh. He's kind of like Bran Stark of Game of Thrones. Right. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Just kind of comes in every... Yeah, right. He was gone for that one season or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's something I hadn't even realized was... Holy crap, Bran Stark wasn't in the fifth season. Right. Uh, most other characters were in every season up until their last. But no, Bran, I think, is one of the few if not the only main character who wasn't in the fifth season and i guess uh michael mckean as chuck mcgill gets to share that same <laughs> appearance yeah i guess well yeah yeah i guess it's kind of similar <laughs> yeah kind, kind of funny how that turned out yeah. but crap i don't and, uh... remember where i was going on that whole train of thought from but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, we'll just like continue with the uh, the episode. I guess like, did you expect him to uh, to get caught that fast? Oh, definitely not that quickly. I no, nope, I didn't either. And what I loved was before he got caught, and I even tweeted about it. Uh, Dave Porter, who, if I can uh, grab it. Just ever so sneakily. Oh, shite. Um, hold on. Yep, it's all good. <laughs> that sucker right there. I am so bloody thankful my steelbook has it. Because that has protected this baby. Oh, yeah. Which I am so bloody relieved. It dropped just now as I was grabbing my vinyl, and it's completely unscathed. Oh, very nice, very nice. Uh, my heart would have been so broken if it got damaged, because I'm not sure I can get another one. But what I was going to grab, if I can uh, steal away a moment here, uh, you go <laughs> ahead. Well, I, I guess, uh, yeah, I was just, uh, I, yeah, I did not expect Jimmy to get caught that quickly, you know? Like, I was expecting, like, maybe we would have a whole episode of a chase, and maybe, like, the last ten minutes would be, like, a legal encounter kind of thing. And I, I just, I didn't expect him to get caught so quickly, but, like, him in the dumpster like that, and the cops, uh, like, they, they just, you know, getting him like that, and him in the in the... I guess it's not really a jail cell. He's kind of in like solitary confinement there and he starts laughing his ass off. Like, <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. I was thinking, geez, it's like a crawl space. And we've yes. already had the crawl space reference. I think it was when he was going to Kim, uh, just suddenly having that freak out moment of, come on. And I'm thinking, that reminds me of when Walt just completely freaks out of the way of oh, when yep. Skyler is trying to tell him that she just gave the money to her co-worker that she had an affair with. Right. And so back to that whole chase scene. This man, oh my crap. <laughs> right here. And I will not forget 
so by god i hope the moment when i shared that yep i finally got my el camino vinyl because i want that whole score from that movie because i love it right and i'm disappointed that not as many people loved it as much as i did oh it was a great movie i loved el camino i i watched it twice over i gotta tell you oh yeah for, for sure yeah i've watched it many times um and i gotta say a part of my excuse to watch it twice over Ooh, okay not completely unscathed ah, minor scratches it'll wear mm-hmm. off <laughs> but anyways crap oh that's right I had tweeted about that the score that Dave Porter made for that episode, I felt my heart beating at the same pace as the oh, yeah. per minute of his score. And right. I'm thinking, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, where is he finally going to go? And then I'm not sure what's going to happen now that he's opted for the dumpster. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And oh, I'm trying to remember what show. I, I think it might have been Breaking Bad where, uh, was it Jesse or someone who decided to opt for the dumpster and uh, ended up, I think, instantly regretting it? Maybe. I, I, I think so. Yeah, maybe during season two or something. Yeah, I, I swear there was an episode like that where he just goes into that and... Oh, I know what it was. Oh, it's the porta potty. Eh? Yeah. In, uh, oh my god, yes. you read my mind, dude. Yes, yes. As soon as you said that, I yeah, I realized. Yes, very, very close to the porta potty in season two. Yeah, I I cannot believe that that's the parallel my mind was trying to draw, and I'm thinking I should <laughs> know this because just like El Camino, and it's why I felt justified in watching it twice over is because I watched Breaking Bad twice over. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I mean, that's just it, is Jesse's on the run, and what's he do? Go on top of a porter potty and falls right in, into all that gross crap inside. Ooh. Ooh. And Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, that is totally a parallel there. And, my God, that that's just what I've loved about this entire season, is all these parallels... They've finally been drawing to past events of the show. Yes, uh, I yeah, totally agree. Really bad. What I really did not expect was Miss Mrs. Purple. You right, know, the one who's got that. Uh, what what do you call it? Where you have a penchant for thievery. Oh, uh, kleptomaniac. Thank you. That's perfect. Yes. Yeah. And she finally came back just so... And I loved it because this is one of the things that I feel Saul Gone did so much better than Breaking Bad and its closure. And its closure mm-hmm. to the extent of we finally got what I feel is more closure for what happened to Hank in that she finally gets more word than just having her little chat with her sister over the phone Mm -hmm. and having her cry over in Ozymandias about just learning that Hank died and now she finally gets to speak her mind about what her husband meant to her even if he was a bit of an arse (laughs) yeah no yeah you're you're completely right on that is we we never really got to see Marie's like real reaction and like how she really felt about the situation we just got see we saw her cry about it you know like her initial reaction but we never really saw her like dealing with hank's death and we we did get to see a glimpse of that in this episode and i was like i remember people were saying that skylar might uh show up in this episode and i i was kind of expecting that myself Uh, i did not expect marie at all (laughs) yeah i i don't think i i guess the most that Skylar got was wasn't it what was brought up in Breaking Bad I believe it was when yeah that would have been the Breaking Bad episode when uh, Gene calls 
Francesca and she reveals that uh, Skylar got off. Right. And I guess that's all we, the closure we got with her, but I definitely wouldn't have minded her being in this episode. No, I, I wouldn't have minded it. I think it would have been fine, but I, I, I do think uh, Marie was the better choice to have, right? Because we, yeah. we did get some sort of closure on Skylar and how she felt about Walt and his situation, uh, but we didn't really get that with Marie, so I thought it was a brilliant situa- uh, a choice to bring her back and, and have her reveal all that stuff about how she felt about the situation, and uh, it was great to see Betsy Brandt again. Yeah, and <laughs> along with many others in the show, holy crap, just like her on-screen husband doesn't look like she aged a day since Breaking Bad, and it's no, been yeah, not at nine all. freaking years. <laughs> True. It's almost true. It has been. Oh, that's hi crazy. There, it's been that long. AKA saying, uh, crap. Um, this might be a problematic stream for you if you have not, because I know the last time we chatted, uh, that you hadn't watched all of Better Call Saul yet. So I hate to warn you, to have to warn you already here that. I, I guess it's kind of in the title, more. Or it's less. yeah, it's it's in. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll give you some uh some some leeway. You know, just say so, you know there are major spoilers for season six. So okay, you know if, yeah. if you don't want to be spoiled, then I guess you know ten seconds to get out. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's going to lurk. Apparently, that that is a safe choice, my friend. Because oh, safe choice. I I would I would, I'll I'll use a line that I've been using since I left my call center job. I'd rather shoot myself than spoil the show for you. (laughs) I will never forget this classmate of mine back in high school. And I think if I ever got back into contact with him, I'd get along with him fine. But I still am not sure I could ever forgive him for back in our English class it was because he knew I was so obsessed with Breaking Bad, and Mm -hmm. he just chimes in my ear, Walt dies. And I go, Oh, what? And I just move my chair away from him, and my teacher, whose name is Mrs. Terry, she's going, uh, I forget what exactly she said, but just wondered, "Uh, what are you doing, Nathaniel? And I go, "Uh, he just spoiled a major plot point for me. That is why I'm getting away from him right now. (laughs) Man, what a douche. uh, (laughs) Yeah, and actually my other friend, and I've forgiven him for it, I think. But I remember one time we were doing, I think, one of these podcasts that I used to run. I think it was Blaze on Nation, which later I'd find out it's actually Blaze in that it's pronounced as, but... It was my old <laughs> politics podcast before I got edgy in college and then out of the rabbit hole since then. And he brought up, want to know how Walt dies? <laughs> and I go, dude, you're lucky that I already know he does die, but no, I don't <laughs> want to know. And I saw it even on Twitter once someone sharing just a video clip of Walt collapsing and yeah. I was so relieved when I found out that oh so that wasn't when Walt died that was just an Ozymandias <laughs> he was collapsing yes, yes, over yes. something else and lo and behold okay I still knew that he died but I was so surprised to find out that and I even accidentally re- caught something on Wikipedia that it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound I'm so happy that I still didn't expect that. Oh, it's because he rigged up a fully automatic rifle in a car. Right. And just, it wasn't him intentionally wounding himself. He just got caught up and caught up in the fire. Yeah. So I guess, would you say that um, Jimmy's confession was the same as Walt's gunfire machine gun? Ooh. That is a good question, because I mean that that was of course self-inflicted, and him. But he saved Kim, right? He did it to save Kim. 
Oh my crap, that is right. Yeah, because the thought occurred to me and I don't know why it feels like, oh, I totally didn't notice or forgot about that. But yeah, that's right, because I remembering it coming off like, oh, he's saying that so that Kim... And oh my god, that's just like when y you think that's a parallel. Think back to... Uh, Granite State, was it? Or no, no, that was Ozymandias still, where Walt delivers that final phone call to Skylar of, you right. stupid bitch. Yes. And I'm thinking, oh my god, how could you speak to your own wife like that after all you did to her? And then I forget if I saw it online or if it just dawned on me that, oh, holy crap. That was like a two-faced thing, huh? <laughs> uh, Marie bringing up that two-faced bastard <laughs> and yeah. that, that was his two-faced call where the police think that he's just being so awful to his wife but really what it's deep down a case of it's him acquitting his wife so that the yes. police don't come after her which we of course find out worked out in the post breaking bad better call Saul timeline. Yeah, yeah, true. I mean there you go. Yeah, talk <laughs> about holy parallels, Batman. They really that, pull yeah. out all the stops. That's, That's kind of crazy, yeah. Like that that Jimmy's legal mind and him using his mouth is the same as Walter going into a place and rigging a machine gun to kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just That's annihilating crazy. everyone's ability to stop him yes exactly and while they think they've got him because oh yeah we're finally gonna put you in jail well not for long from what yeah. i could gather because actually i think that's the part i was uh having us gloss over by accident was what seems to be some confusion which i'm still in a state of is did saul or not did Saul, but when he had that final conversation with Kim, I thought that was Saul or Jimmy saying that, yeah, he only got the seven years, but she got 86 years. Yeah, no, I, I, I think he's in there for life for sure. Okay. So, because, of the, well, that, that, that statement he made, there's no way he can go back on that. He said he, he was at fault for all the murders that Walter did, so they would have for sure made a, an example out of him after that. Okay, so basically, it went from the seven years that he'd agreed to, and then once he broke from that formal agreement is when, yeah. okay, now you're up to 86 yeah, but, years. Yeah, now, now, yeah, he's in there for 86 years, which is crazy. <laughs> okay, now that clarifies it for me. Yeah. And I, I just tweeted it, uh, I think, during the early bits of this broadcast or before it, one of the two, of what I believe is the biggest theme, at least by the end of that episode, and it's true love. Right, yeah. Uh, because I was so badly hoping that Kim would make it back into the episode. And lo and behold, kind of trailing off of predictions that that Eric Kane guy made, which were that, well, maybe Saul will finally see his own day in court. And I thought, yeah, that would be such a full circle moment. Because the very first episode, he's defending people in court yeah and now we're finally seeing him defending himself in court and kim is his witness although i think that was maybe not so much the case here actually as far right. as her being the witness no i get what you're saying yeah 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 Wait, which but, yeah i'm i'm quite happy about because i still wanted to be surprised by this episode which i frankly was even besides that court scene yeah, I, I was I was surprised by it too. Even though like it was almost like a popular fan theory, I'd say that that Jimmy would would go to jail and he would uh, he would thrive in jail. 
You know, that that was like I saw people say that all the time. Like, you know, if Jimmy goes to jail, he'll be happy. He won't be like Gene. He'll actually have, have a, a nice life. And, you know, it, it was predictable, but it, they, they wrote it so cleverly that I, you know, I loved it. Yeah. And I think from what I gathered, he is definitely going to live up that life especially yeah well yeah yeah i think there was a parallel between him because he's working like a bread machine in prison right and he's doing like he's working the kitchen so there's a parallel to his job at cinnabon right he seems to be a lot happier yeah yeah and which is interesting in with his crew and if i still had the tiktok app on my phone i would post it but i kind of deleted the app because Oh my goodness, it runs so poorly on my phone, and I think it's partly because <laughs> as soon as you open it up, a video's auto-playing, which pisses me off. That's why they make it that way. Because otherwise, I would be posting a clip of all the inmates going, Better call Saul! Better call Saul! Better call Saul. <laughs> Better call Saul. One of my favorite moments from the episode, for sure. Yeah. Where... That was awesome. You'd think that all these jailbirds are going to go, oh, you're that some bit who tried to screw me over with the law, and now they're all yep. going, hey, you're so good, man. You're the guy who defends people like us. Yeah, yeah, seriously. That's why they took so instantly to love him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was, that was great, you know, and... Like I said, you know, I, we, a lot of people predicted that would happen, but it was still so cool to see. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think that's kind of my jam with Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. And it's in the way of even though a bunch of the, these things I felt like, yeah, I, I predicted that to happen. But it happens in a way that, okay, but I didn't expect it to happen like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can say the same thing, but yeah, with Better Call Saul, for sure. Yeah, I did yeah. not expect it. Like, I expected maybe Jimmy would confess and, and he would let Kim take the blame, but I didn't expect it would happen like that. Yeah. yeah. And my, my favorite part, too, is, and I made a point about, I mean, we make so many points about this show on Twitter when we live tweet about it. And mm-hmm. another part was in court. I did not expect him to bring up Chuck again. It's like, oh, yeah, right, you know yeah. my brother, right? And then that finally pans to that camera that features the exit sign. Right, yeah. I'm thinking, what a throwback to chicanery. Yes, and while, while he's talking, you can hear the buzzing. Exactly, that too. Yeah, that was such a nice touch. And then that just leads into that flashback with chuck again right yeah 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 and 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 he's got that book hg wells time machine (laughs) right yeah that that was a big reveal at the end of that scene yeah yeah i'm thinking that's quite the payoff from not only does he have that talk with mike about yeah what would you do if you had a time machine to talking with walt about it and walt just goes Oh, that's a ridiculous question. That's nonsense. Time oh, travel I, that way isn't possible. I didn't even realize that, like that, the whole connection between the time machine talk and in that book. But now I yeah. see it. <laughs> and on top of that, something that I also noticed is it's funny when Jimmy asks Mike about what he'd do. Oh well, he'd go back to the time before he took his first bribe. Yeah, money. And then when it's Jimmy, it's what was it with Jimmy? Jimmy said he would, uh, he because he he did a slip and fall where he really hurt his knee, and he wouldn't have done that. He says. Oh right, right, and that's the same yeah. thing he did tell to Walt. And of course, uh, Mike just goes, "Oh, so just about the money?" Well, yeah, money. And then it's the <laughs> same sort of talk he has with Walt. It's a matter of, well, Walt would go back to his company. Get all that money. Yeah. Yes. And it's about the money. And Saul repeats the same thing over. And I'm thinking, I love how the talks 
for all three of these characters when it comes to what would you do if you could do time travel or in the case of Walt more specifically just regrets because how dare you talk about something scientifically impossible around me yeah, yeah. and I'm thinking don't go breaking my heart Walt but I would love to listen to you talk about how nonsensical and bullshit <laughs> time machine talk is well, okay, did he not say at some point in the episode that it is possible and not possible at the same time or something? I think it might have said something like that, because wormholes or something? Yeah, or the theory of relativity or something. I don't know. I, I don't understand it myself, but it oh, was, I would love yeah. I would love to hear Walt talk about that. <laughs> oh, but like I just mentioned, for an hour I could have dug just him laying into me of how nonsensical it is. Yep. Totally. And just that it's all about the money. I, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. That, that was yeah, that was very interesting. And then uh and then Chuck with the book at the end. I didn't even notice that. That's so cool. Yeah. Was all, yeah. yeah, way to do sort of a conclusion to that whole uh conversation piece. Yeah, totally. Well, you know, uh, Jimmy was reading that time tra- traveler's book at the, the beginning of season six. I so, like in early, about in, that. yeah, in earlier episodes of season six, you see him reading that exact book, and I was that 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 was the connection I made at first, but then it was like, oh, okay, then now there's more connection to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Crazy. Yep. Just uh, I, yeah, I I loved the episode. I thought it was an amazing finale. It said so much about like Jimmy and Kim's relationship and like what Jimmy is willing to do for Kim. Like, and yeah. at the I guess what Kim is willing to do for Jimmy. You know, at the end there, she she's a lawyer again. You know what I mean? Like, what's that? Like, I what's didn't that all even about? notice that. Yeah, I didn't realize that she's gone back to being a lawyer. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah, because he says uh, he says something about. She says something about her Albuquerque law license never expired or something. So she's a lawyer oh, again. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I, and I so that detail and I didn't fully catch it. Oh my so God. what what I'm thinking is what was the actual conversation they had while they were smoking that cigarette? Yeah. Did they somehow plan to get him out somehow? I would wonder. Looks like they because... need another spinoff. Because at the end there, right, he shoots the guns at her. So what does that mean? Does that mean they're yeah. scamming again? That they're going to scam him out of there? <laughs> well, that's kind of what I thought is something tells me about that very visit. That's either not the first or it's definitely not the last. Yes, I agree with that. It's definitely, in my mind, a life goes on from here ending where it's right there's more that could come but they're not gonna bother writing about it no 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 i like i like that it's almost it is left ambiguous and, and a lot of people thought they wouldn't give an ambiguous ending but it is i feel it is left ambiguous yeah exactly for sure i mean Very mainly the part where oh saul is still alive he survived yeah. his own show <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that's great. I mean, well, the the only know, one who did die was Gene. Well, okay, Saul and Gene died. Saul and Gene. Yeah, that's 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 Jimmy McGill at the end for sure. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That's Jimmy. Yeah, one hundred percent there. Yeah. No. And uh, yeah. No, that was just, that's just fucking crazy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I I see we're both in agreement. Though, I, I'm going with, as soon as I see it, and actually, I'm going to quickly pop on their Twitter feed to just see if anything has been announced already about it, because <laughs> as I'm going to show off on stream here, okay, they haven't shown anything off besides that lovely hug. It's all good, man. It's all good, man. <laughs> I, I'm so relieved I actually teared up. In those final moments of that episode, because that was just so beautiful. Yeah, same with me. While he was, 
uh, like, like just seeing him on the bus and everything and like talking with Kim in those last final moments and what a what a like recap to go back to that first shot we had with them in the very first episode where they're smoke they're sharing a cigarette outside of HHM and to to throw back to that that was amazing yes and Ooh. this that I'm showing right off here Unfortunately, you can't get the limited edition signed version anymore, but you can still mm. get this baby on Amazon. The barrel. Yep. The complete series of Breaking Bad. And I originally wasn't sure if I would get it, but then I heard that there's bonus content, including the two-hour making of documentary. Where yep. My favorite part about it is the part where Hank Schrader's actor Dean Norris goes, his favorite thing about being on set is he can go, Father Mucker. He, like, he can <laughs> just drop the explicit version of that euphemism as many times as he likes, ever so casually, and nobody bats an eye. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> wow. It's almost as good as South Park, the 25th anniversary concert, where they get away with doing Uncle Fa uh um <laughs> buggers and drum <laughs> so many yep. song titles i cannot repeat or will not repeat on here you can repeat them i don't care but <laughs> that i dare not speak out of my mouth because <laughs> there's i will never forget when i learned i was listening to jacking it in san diego and my <laughs> mom goes that's offensive and i thought how the heck is this offensive then i realized oh this is That's about public masturbation which <laughs> Saul you could call him for and here i thought oh i thought jacking was just dancing <laughs> like hey there you just go There's dancing a... naked in san diego but oh okay <laughs> There's a parallel because the first time uh, Saul comes into Breaking Bad, he thinks that uh, Brandon's a public masturbator. Thought he was <laughs> yeah, jacking exactly. it, jacking it in San Diego. That they should. Do, someone should do a version where it's uh, something you can go jacking it like Mayhew in Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, New Mexico. There you go. <laughs> there it still rhymes somehow. Yeah, yeah, that kind of works. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, no, that funny. he brings up even twice in that episode. I'm thinking, whoa, he's he even. And I was thinking, I'm not sure why he's got to repeat himself with the story. And then that's right, because Mike Ehrmantraut taught him to stick to the story, repeat it over and over. Right. Where that way you're going to get yourself. more of a lenient treatment because you are sticking to your story no matter what even though of course yeah his original story he kind of shied away from but yeah well i think i think that was the whole point of him saying that right was so that he could change it all and save kim like that yeah and then I... say what he really wanted to say to save kim all under oath yes and Another thing that I loved was, and it was such a parallel to Nippy, when he's telling that security guard, and I was telling my parents this when we watched the episode, and, and I think it's the funniest thing, because I just put it on, and my dad comes home, and he'll usually watch whatever I got put on if it's taking till the time that uh he gets home or whatever yep uh what's the word for it overlapping that time and my mom comes up and i bet she didn't know it was better call saul and it was this very episode and i point and i thought to mention to them by the way everything he's telling the security guard about woe is me and the life i <laughs> led it's actually all true he did yeah. not unload a single lie onto that security guard. No, he didn't. What I loved was when he's giving his whole confession to... I keep wanting to say Betsy Brandt 
who's just the actress, but it's Marie, Marie. Schrader. Yeah. Yeah, and when he's unloading it all in front of her, I'm thinking, I love that she is so displeased with all that he's saying because yes. they all don't believe him. No. But what he's saying is still all completely true. Well, yeah, to a point, right? Because, yeah. like, he, he is saying that, uh, you know, he only did it because he was scared, which we know is not true. He did it for the money. Yeah. yeah but, which, there, yeah, there, like, there is a right. point where it he is true. I mean, twisted he did, once say, he gets he did say no to the money. Point. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was crazy. And I just loved that that other parallel. Crap, we're gonna be saying I'm gonna be saying that word way too much tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there are so many of them, and crap, what was another highlight moment? Oh, the part where Marion uh, just says what she has to say, and. God, I think it speaks to just what a sweetheart her character is. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It makes it so much sadder that she was manipulated that she could... Ag- and I feel like drawing it towards the part where she doesn't even say, somebody catch that jerk. She just goes, I, I hope he gets caught. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she just says it in a way that is so the opposite of rude that i'm thinking wow you just got screwed over by this douchebag who we've come to love so much and you're still willing to keep your cool about it basically yeah yeah she was yeah calm collective about it i guess that was kind of always her character that's the perfect way to describe it and Mm -hmm. that that's another thing when they mentioned that yeah carol burnett's coming into the show and i actually had no idea whom she was because right she that, oh she's some comedian a uh, popular one at that and i thought you know i wonder how this is gonna go i'm not sure about this and i'm so disappointed that i thought that way because i could not have been more wrong with what she brought to the show yo oh, yeah she brought i loved her character it was amazing yes I absolutely it. I looked you up on Ask Jeeves and I thought, oh my god, that's the same search engine my mom made me use uh, (laughs) during my early days of usage of the internet so that I didn't go on any crazy websites that I'm not supposed to. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. And that, that, holy crap, between that and the adventures of Jackie Chan playing on that TV, what a nostalgic throwback for me. Oh, yeah, totally, yeah. And the Jackie Chan Adventures, that was fun. Can't believe yeah, they did that. Same. And I even love that you were pointing out that they're using all these popular songs that you've come to love, and they're featuring those on the show. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And like Brandy and uh, like uh, Dreamer's Holiday by Perry Como. And, oh, man, so many great songs that this, this show has introduced me to, and I'm, I'm so grateful for... Thomas uh, Guljevic, who is the music supervisor, who's the one who recommends music for them to play. And he's he's just got a great taste in music. Oh, man. That that actually falls all the way to the pilot of Breaking Bad. Um, when I first watched the pilot of Breaking Bad was uh, when it, it initially blew up on Netflix. And everyone was like, you got to watch this. You got to watch this. Oh, uh, a friend yeah. told me to watch it, so I did. And she told me, like, the music is really, really good. Like, the, all the songs they play is awesome. And like, that was one thing I noticed in the Breaking Bad pilot was that there were so many songs in the pilot that I loved. And I was like, man, this show is so good. And that, that continued all the way to the finale. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. on top of that, you, you mentioning when you first got into the show, I – so, of course, I heard about it first on this podcast. And mm-hmm. then – I heard about it from, and of course, that guy I met in that community, he's Mm -hmm. doing something with his girlfriend tonight, so (laughs) he has fun with that, but I I guess he thought this was a cool idea too, (laughs) and I'm thinking, yeah, I probably would have told you sooner, but we only came up with this crap today. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And my 
favorite part about uh, my pre-introduction to the show, really, was I asked my teacher, Mrs. Lally, about it, and she goes, no, 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 don't spoil it for me. And I said, oh, Mrs. Lally, I haven't even started the show yet. <laughs> <laughs> and so I basically took that as a sign of, okay, I, I, I gotta by now. You gotta watch and it, it. It was actually just less than a year after the show finally ended that I finally got into it. And then I think it was the third season where um, there was something about the Walt and Skylar having marital issues that just really set to discomfortably with me. Uncomfortably. Right. For the lack of a better word. Because I thought, I know that Walt does not make wise choices. And that's why he's landed himself in this hole. But I, yeah. I really don't want to see them go through that. that that's just heartbreaking to me. Even right. though she's totally right to want to divorce him over finding out what he's done. And... So that took me, crap, I think about, I want to say four years, maybe only four and a half, three and a half years or so before I finally got back into it. Because I, I oh, like to okay. call it just that emotional barrier that just really got me. Yeah. And I, I think I even kind of learned that maybe it wasn't a bad thing after all that I waited. Because I'm thinking... Yeah, the show's 14A in Canada, but God, it was actually really kind of mature for that rating. <laughs> and True. I yeah. Feel like I could handle, like I got to handle it much better by the time I did finish it, which was actually. Oh, I finished the grand finale. Actually, I believe it was the night of the first episode's premiere because they were doing the oh, okay. Breaking Bad marathon yeah, on AMC for the 10th anniversary and I finished the final episode for the first time ever on January 20th, 2018 which was when the show originally aired. At least I believe I right. did. Right. Right, okay. I think it was uh, 2015 that Better Call Saul first aired. Yeah. And actually, that's kind of the funny thing, is I didn't even finish Breaking Bad by that time. Right. So I finished uh, Breaking Bad before, or no, I finished Breaking Bad halfway-ish, yeah, about halfway through Better Call Saul. Oh, so you uh, you again. actually watched you watched Better Call Saul before you finished Breaking Bad? Yep, exactly. Crazy, that's crazy, man. I can't believe that. <laughs> yeah, so I actually <laughs> got to know about the Gene timeline before I even knew how Breaking Bad ended. Right. Okay. Interesting. Because I, I like I said, I, I started watching Breaking Bad when the Netflix boom came out. So I, I actually watched the last season of Breaking Bad live. Like as it was coming out, oh, and then um, dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm an OG fan, my friend. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, and then when Better Call Saul when they announced, I remember like when Be uh, Breaking Bad was ending, they're like, we're gonna do a show called Better Call Saul, and right. everyone had the most mixed opinions about it. Some people were like, it's gonna be great. Some people were like, it's gonna be awful. And I was like, I'm just gonna fucking see what it's like. And then I remember the, the day it premiered, it was uh, my, me and my sister watched it. And I remember I actually fell asleep halfway through the pilot. But it wasn't because it was boring or anything. It was because I was like physically very tired that day. And I just right. remember I fell asleep halfway through the pilot. But I thought it was very, very good. And I loved it. Well, and that's been then, kind of my issue with most of my TV shows. Yep. I doze off during them. Not because mm -hmm. I'm bored or anything. It's just that... I'm an idiotic night owl. <laughs> right. Same. And so I I will be the first to admit I don't get enough sleep every night, even though I'm aiming for on weekdays 1.30 off my computer, so I'm in bed by 
hopefully no later than two so i can get at least a solid six hours of sleep a night right and i keep screwing that up <laughs> oh man you got to get some exercise that's my uh that's my best advice exercise yourself tire yourself out yeah that, that's basically what my dad does is he'll wear himself out during the day so that by the time we're watching young sheldon resident alien actually he stayed awake during dexter new blood when that aired and eric kane was one of the few reviewers who like me really liked how that show ended right Even interesting a lot of people thought sins of the father more like sins of the writers and i'm thinking <laughs> i don't know <laughs> to me dexter was kind of like walter and saul in that respect of none of these characters are actually good people right they've got like dexter he's a serial killer where the only redeeming quality which isn't even really redeeming is that he has a strict code that he follows where he only kills people who he's vindicated if that's the word for it right yep to be certain that they've uh committed murder previously mm -hmm. and then of course what happened to him finally happened in new blood where he finally gets his comeuppance for it where it's all these years of your terrible deeds have come back to bite you and that's what we got in breaking bad felina what or really even ozymandias because i think that felina was more of a redemption arc for walt and it's ozymandias where it's like this is where your life has gotten you and watch it all fall beneath you to the point you've yep. got nothing to I, stand on. I agree with that. Yeah, that's kind of just, the, I guess, the moral plot of the whole show, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then totally. With Better Call Saul, it's that last episode, but then trailing into this one where he's finally lost. Yep. Everything it... in his past has finally come back to bite him. Because, yep. yes, we've enjoyed watching him over these years, like Dexter, like Walt. But make no mistake, his actions are largely immoral. And yeah, absolutely. Unethical. Absolutely. And yeah, no, I agree. I was talking with someone who's of the... D and E saga community for Ghost of Tsushima, which is that fantastic PlayStation game, which will hopefully come to PC at some point. But anyhow, one of the community members there, we were talking about that with these shows, we're merely conditioned by the way they tell the stories. We are conditioned, influenced by the storytelling to fall in love with the anti-hero character. Yes. We know they aren't good. Uh, unless, of course, you're that odd person who would still excuse their actions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. True. Uh, the anti-hero is glorious to us, yes. I, I remember even back to Breaking Bad, everybody hates on Skyler. And yeah. I thought, yeah, why, why do you keep doing this, Skyler? Walt is doing this meth cooking for his family for you and i only finally realized on the road of that couldn't have been more wrong she had every right to want out of that marriage and when she cheats with todd banneke i'm surprised i actually remembered his name yeah <laughs> that was her way of finally going okay i just boinked this man you give me that divorce now even though he still wants to stay together which holy crap talk about another parallel i just realized walt still wants to stay with skylar even after finding out that ift mm -hmm. whereas in better call saul he uh, he 
he's trying to fight Kim in that childish manner, like I think you said. And basically, she's completely right. They are bad for each other. So she's right, like Skylar is right, that their marriage should be no longer. But Saul, like Walt, is still trying to hold on just by yeah. all those very just by fishing line for crap's sake so do you think that kim when she goes to visit jimmy in the jail do you think she's in a relationship with someone else at that point in time crap that is such a good question because <laughs> that's what i was wondering myself like did she dr did she drop the guy in florida she must have if she's a I lawyer in albuquerque so. now she must have dropped that guy in florida I, I would certainly hope so. I, I'm right. not sure if I'd say that I think she did. I'll just go with I hope she did. Because who the crap says, yep, 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 <laughs> during sex of all things. I mean, Crazy. it's only less weird than Sheldon going whoopee when he's having sex for the first time with Amy. Right. In the beginning <laughs> theory. I'm thinking of all the things you can say during sex. <laughs> if I ever reach that point in my life, I sure, I'm sure as crap I am not that awkward with my wife. Right. <laughs> I ever got one. Right. Well, it's just, I don't know. I, just, I wonder if Kim, like, because she's obviously, she can't be in a sexual relationship with Saul. So she's got to be in a sexual relationship with someone else. Who the hell is it? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. You know, that's, I'm that's thinking, what I'm going to be wondering. Why she? But, oh, yeah, that's right, because he's a jailbird now. He's in jail, so there's no way. There's, she, they're in a relationship, you know. Yeah. She's got to be with someone else. And but who knows, question. right? The many, the, many mysteries of, uh, the many mysteries of Better Call Saul that we will not learn, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless they answer people's wishes despite what vince gilligan and probably even peter gould have gould have said which is no there will not be another spinoff which and i i agree with i don't want another spinoff i'm gonna stab you with this there won't even be a game and oh come on game there'll be a game someday there'll be a gta inspired breaking bad game and everyone will be like hey it was jonathan tessier who inspired gilgan to do that <laughs> uh, i think it's still funny and looking at all these articles and seeing that you pointed it out that yeah not a single one of them mentions that they answered this question because you're the one who asked it on that podcast i know i'm not i'm the genius behind it all but i get no credit <laughs> exactly that that's how it works in some of that journalistic world credit yep where or no credit, where it's due. And, yep. uh, I mean, they had Breaking Bad Criminal Elements. And I loaded up the game for the last time today. And it says it's under maintenance. But, actually, it was shut down back in 2020. Yeah, I didn't yeah, even yeah. know that. But, exactly, yeah, the mobile game, right. I mean, I think it's kind of like other mobile games where... I mean, are you really surprised it didn't last that long, considering um, the nature of those games? Yeah, <laughs> it, it's basically you pay a bunch of money to progress through it. Pay for play. Yep. It, it's I think like why as big a Potterhead as I am, I never got into Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery. I I want to get back into it at some point. But the major failure of that game is, and probably is the same reason with Criminal Elements, is because why not just make the player pay up front? I mean, Nintendo did that with Super Mario Run, where it's just right. straight $13 and you have the full game, no questions asked. Yeah, you because know, they, they don't make as much money that way. <laughs> yeah. But hey, at least Nintendo makes enough money with their regular games. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, I gotta, I gotta dip, man. I gotta get up <laughs> early tomorrow, so I'm gonna head out of here. I've worn you out, my man. Yeah, it's all good, my friend. I was, uh, it was great talking with you about the the finale, and it was really great live tweeting with you during the the season six there. 
it, it's been a, an absolute pleasure and feel free anyone to check my instagram my weekly series of posts where i do a good thumbs up during some frame of the show mm -hmm. that that has come to an end um i'm not sure if i'm gonna run my solid showtime twitter account anymore where it was basically just a gif of it's showtime and then <laughs> with the caption of you hashtag better call Saul exclamation mark because i thought i'd try to get that running and never took off but it was fun while oh. it lasted either way yeah it's uh it's fun to do but yeah yeah and suffice to say it was all too much fun while it lasted it was a lot of fun my friend <laughs> from the lady who made the word fun sound as depressing as aaron yeager made the beach sound yes exactly <laughs> or no that was the ocean but same difference yeah uh, anyway uh I, i'm gonna go so uh okay. I'll, I'll talk to you later my friend thank you so very much for joining me jay mm -hmm. tess have a good one, buddy. Peace you out. You too. Have a wonderful night. Bye. And this is where I'm going to conclude this portion of the stream, which has had a crap ton of frames die already. So thank you for tuning in for a good long talk because it's solemn time. With yours truly, JBJ Blaze, aka Nathaniel Rantrell, with a B in between. And not in that way. And J Tess, who's just left. Have a great night. Bye to bye. And better call us all. Boop.